What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash am I the butthole? And if you'd like to skip that initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. It all really helps out and I can never express that enough. And I know I tell you every day, but I feel like I have to because it helps so, so much. And with that being said, let's crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now our first story comes from question 56735. Am I the asshole for pointing at the kitchen when mother-in-law asked, where is our dinner? My husband had a serious injury weeks ago. He's bedridden and his family come to see him every day. Mother-in-law keeps drilling what I need to do to make my husband comfortable, but does nothing to help. Just visits every day and sits around expecting to be fed and entertained. Sometimes brother-in-law, his wife, and kids join them and turn the house into a mess. Yesterday, mother-in-law, her husband, and son came again. They checked on my husband, then went to sit in the living room for hours. I served them coffee and croissants. Hours later, my husband threw up again, second time. I had to take care of changing his clothes and cleaning the sheets to avoid infections. I was exhausted. I came downstairs and mother-in-law looked at me and asked, hey, where's our dinner? I was shocked that after seeing me go up and down stairs many times in cleaning and bringing new sheets and running the washing machine that she'd expect me to prepare dinner. I'd already eaten a sandwich at six and yogurt. I had problems with my stomach and stress and pregnancy made it worse. I'm four months in. I pointed at the kitchen and told her to help herself. She gave me a look, then said she didn't expect me to ask her to cook dinner at my house. I said I didn't expect her to ask me to cook dinner while I'm taking care of her son. She started arguing about the way I spoke about my husband, saying as his partner, this is the least I could do, and called me unhinged for throwing in her face that I'm helping my husband. She got her husband involved asking what his thoughts were on making guests go hungry and forcing them to cook themselves when this is supposed to be my duty as a host slash homeowner. Father-in-law said they could order food and call it a day and yelled at my younger brother-in-law to stop playing on his phone and order food. But mother-in-law got mad and lashed out, criticizing me, saying I wasn't up to the challenge and taking care of my home and my guests like an adult. I lost it on her and told them to leave so she kept yelling and disrupting my husband's sleep. She left after saying she felt sorry for her son and Granberry with her aggressive wife and mother like me. She told everyone and my older brother-in-law said he understood I had a lot on my plate but lectured me about how I should have respect for his mum who was a guest, repeatedly saying that his wife wouldn't have acted this way and that I shouldn't use taking care of my husband against them. He asked me to apologize but didn't. Info, my husband suffers from two major injuries and he's got a long recovery ahead. Right now there's so much pressure to take care of him while keeping up with the house chores and work. My mum and sister help, but not mother-in-law. She claimed that when I told them to leave, I was refusing to let her see a sick son, but I'd never do that. I lost a loved one before seeing them, so I understand her fear, but brother-in-law thought that was my goal. Edit, I live in the States, in the South. The way I kind of see this one is that you were great to put up with it up to this point, and are they actually guests? They sound like they're just turning up whenever they want to see the sun, which, you know, Seeing the sun is okay, but they still need to ask to come round to your house, as they put it. It's your house. They should be asking you, is it okay if we can come round today? And not expecting you to run around for them like like that, because that's absolutely ridiculous. You're not the arsehole. And I think you're setting up some, some boundaries for them here. And you need to carry on with those to let them understand that they can't do this in your house. But narrow map says not the arsehole. Don't let them in anymore or give them strict visiting hours and kick them out when they are done. They are real assholes for sitting on their asses all day at your house expecting to be waited on. Their dinner wasn't in the kitchen at your house. It was in the kitchen at their house. It's not your responsibility to feed unwanted and unhelpful guests. And the Kelsey says, no, not the asshole. She's the asshole. This isn't the 1950s anymore. Gender roles are not the same. Seems like your hubby's family has yet to catch up, but that's not on you. I'm curious if your husband would have put his foot down if they dared said that in front of him but good on you for sticking up for yourself. And work hard Jim Harder says, your mother-in-law isn't a guest. A guest is invited and welcome. She's a mooch. You are not the arsehole. You've been putting up with this for weeks. 
You are a saint for not snapping sooner. Don't let them into your house anymore and definitely don't apologize. I hope your husband recovers soon and your pregnancy goes well. And Ikaya says, not the arsehole. They might be guests, but I feel like they're unwelcome ones. Just kick to the curb. You have enough on your plate and you're pregnant too. Boot them and save yourself at least that headache. And we'll have the final comment from OP who replied to that one saying, yes, I'm four months pregnant. It's my first and I'm struggling a lot, especially with eating. I find myself constantly feeling nauseous, unable to sleep or eat anything, trying to get everything done as fast as I can. My family helps with all they can. Mother-in-law says that I can't keep her from seeing her son, although I'm not trying to do that, but she told the family this was the case and I was looking for an excuse to keep her out. And in some ways, after the way you're, you're explaining your feelings as well, I think you just do need to keep them out apart from the ones that's helping the situation because you're under enough pressure as well, especially with being pregnant. It can't be helpful to you. So absolutely not the arsehole once again. And let's move on to the next story. And our next story comes from Less Volume 5742. Am I the arsehole for not getting a tattoo with my sisters and inheriting our grandma's money? My grandma is super against tattoos. She says they don't look good on women. My two brothers have tattoos though, and that's fine with her. When she found out my oldest sister, there's four of us, had a tattoo, we still don't know who snitched. She took my sister out of her will. My other sisters and I made plans for the three of us to get tattoos in solidarity with our sister. I said I was going to do it, but then I realized how dumb that was and decided not to do it. They went through with it though, and they were mad at me when they find out that I didn't do it. My grandma took them off the will and when she died, my two brothers and I inherited all her money and estates. My brother and I gave our sisters a little bit of it, but they want us to split it equally. My sisters have been pressuring me, especially because I had said I was gonna do that tattoo plan with them and I didn't do it. Am I the asshole for not getting the tattoo with them? Also, would I be the asshole if I don't split the inheritance equally with them? I already gave them some, but they want more. And we'll start with the username 52 on this one who says you're the asshole. You were right about it being a stupid reason to do it. Especially if it meant your brother's got all the money and your grandma is ridiculous. But they were mad at you when they found out you didn't do it. So you promised. They went and got it done and you didn't. No. Hey, I thought about it and I really don't want a tattoo. Maybe we can make some agreement to share some of the money with sister. You knew they'd be disinherited and you'd get significantly more money. You shouldn't be guilted or coerced into getting a tattoo that you aren't 100% sure about, but this was about the money to you. If it weren't, you could have just told your grandma to disinherit you. Just a turd out there says, you're the arsehole. You took advantage of your grandma's batshit views, women to steal inheritance from your siblings. And oh hey, I'm Alex says, everyone sucks here. Your grandma sucks, you suck, and your family sucks. The only fair thing to do is split it equally between everyone. If you chose to keep it, go for it. But is the money more important than your family? If so, you'd be the biggest asshole of all. And recommends Malazan who says, you're the asshole. This is not a your body, your choice issue. Of course, if OP doesn't want to get a tattoo, she doesn't have to. What makes her the asshole is telling her sister she would. And then when she decided not to, not telling her sister she changed her mind. For the inheritance issue, yep, you're still the arsehole. I don't care how grandma decided to split up the money. She did so for stupid sexist reasons. And by not splitting up that money evenly with your siblings, you're implicitly telling everyone that you agree with your grandma's stupid sexist reasons. And Bab Crow says, you're the arsehole. You're not obligated to get a tattoo if you don't want one, but you shouldn't have told your sisters you would. And it really comes off like you did this just for the money. Your grandmother is the biggest asshole here though. Imagine cutting your grandchildren out of your will because they own their bodies and do what they want with them. Now, what would you do if you found yourself in this situation? What do you think about OP in this situation? Do you think they are the assholes for not sharing the money afterwards? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. And our next story is from I Really Can't Right Now. Am I the arsehole for not making it a dress for my friend's girlfriend? I met one of my best friends when I was a freshman in college. There has never been anything remotely romantic between us for context. His girlfriend has no problem with his other female friends, it's just me. She's bluntly said she just doesn't like my face or voice. Anyways, today he asked me to make her a dress that I'm making for a client right now. 
I explained that the materials are expensive. I don't know how long it would take since I have this big order and I'm working on a personal project. I said maybe in the fall. I've made him, my friends and their SOs so many things over the years. However, materials alone could cost me over $80. She cried to our mutual friends that I'm not doing it because I don't like her. Now I'm the bad guy since she's the only SO that hasn't gotten anything from me. I explained that this dress could take me weeks. I couldn't afford to give a gift like that right now and I don't have the time. Now she's offering to pay me $50 on a $150 plus dollar dress. And I said I'd never make her anything if she didn't pay full price after lying about me. I'm in the doghouse with my friends because of it. It's making me second guess myself. Am I the asshole? And these stories really wind me up where like friends, like in this case, encourage OP to make a dress. To make someone who doesn't like OP a dress is absolutely ridiculous and they make them second gouse themselves and have to come to am I the arsehole to ask if they're the arsehole when there's no way in hell that you are going to be the arsehole for this for spending your time, your skills, your money making someone who doesn't like you a dress. Absolutely not the arsehole. But Party Snack says, not the arsehole. OP, are you serious? You shouldn't be making her a dress, period. You're really going to let her and your friends treat you like shit and then turn around and do things for them. Of course you're not the asshole, but you're definitely being an asshole to yourself for having zero boundaries and letting people treat you like this. OP replied saying, I do struggle with boundaries sometimes, thanks. And I did forget to mention there is an edit to this one as well, which we'll cover afterwards. But do not develop a dude says, not the asshole, because you don't have to throw away your own money to make someone that doesn't like you happy. If I had to guess, she is jealous because she thinks you're prettier than her. I'd charge extra for that attitude, to be honest. And in this subreddit, we like to call that asshole tax. And Arma says, not the asshole. She sounds extremely entitled. She doesn't get to treat you like crap and then expect things from you. Take some time from the friendship and evaluate if these relationships are worth having. Since none of your friends have your back, I'm assuming they know how horrible she's been treating you. And secondly, you literally don't have the time as you are busy working on something for a client. The nerve of this girl. Stick to your guns. Beautiful Mistake says not the arsehole. She doesn't like your face or voice and you're the bad guy, so she hates you. You have an actual paying client, but you're expected to drop everything for her. She and your friends sound like entitled arseholes. Just for clarification, have you considered getting new friends? How old are you guys? This is some high school behavior BS. You are not the asshole here, but you know that. Your true friends should know that. OP replies, we're ranging from 23 to 26. I felt I was in the right too, but even everyone is saying how mean I am and what an asshole I am. It makes me second guess. Then the edit says, she is extremely entitled and selfish. My friend has almost dumped her twice because she went off on me for negging him and calling him ugly on Instagram, which he does to me all the time. It's all in good fun. And because when he asked what he should wear to their second anniversary dinner, he picked my suggestion over another friend's and she accused me of wanting to bang him. She's backed out on double dates when I tried to be nice to her. She's called me a bad influence, but won't say why. I'm not, I'm the mum friend. She's left his parties early because I'm there and she doesn't want to be around me, spoiling the whole thing for him. She's just mean. Like I feel like she must have been the stereotypical mean girl in high school. It's just directed at me though, so I must be the problem, according to her friends. Edit 2, we're all 23 to 26, so I mean we're young, but I thought we'd outgrown high school. Edit 3, just because people keep asking, it's a crocheted Princess Daisy ball gown. She'd have to buy the part that goes under and makes it cupcakey. I can't think of what it's called right now. But she wants the overdress, crown and gloves for free. I'm making one for me and for a client. It's by far the hardest thing I've ever done and $150 is me being nice since I like cosplaying and helping the community since I know it gets expensive. Edit 4, a petticoat. She'd have to buy a petticoat to go under it. Not cupcakey thing. But essentially, she wants me to make everything else. First for free, then for $50. Now, what do you guys make of this story? I hate it when people try to like abuse friends skills, like you should do this for me for free on a skill that's OP in this situation has developed over time. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. And Pants in Jamestown comes in with, am I the arsehole for deleting my stepdad's World of Warcraft profile 
off my account. Throwaway accounts. I27 Mail started a World of Warcraft account when I was 14. I had to pay for this completely on my own as my parents only ever borrowed money from me and didn't return it. My stepdad got interested in the game and used my account to try it. He started playing 24 seven. I rarely played because whenever he wasn't at work, he was playing and we only had one computer. I continued paying for my account so I could use it when he wasn't home. He pretty much took over my account and made tons of his own characters. When I asked him to chip in for the monthly membership, he'd tell me he was already putting the roof over my head. At 18, I went straight into military and kept the subscription, though I was typically too busy to play. I made a new profile and he kept my old one, still on the same account, and he had to start paying for the profile he was using. The problem was that the account was under my name and email, so whenever he would have an issue, I would have to call Blizzard on his behalf to solve the problem. He would expect me to drop everything and solve it immediately. He once started blowing up my phone while I was driving through a snowstorm because he got locked out and he would not wait until I was somewhere safe. Another time, I was doing training and out in the field for a week and he kept badgering me. I got home after a week without bathing or decent sleep and he harassed me until I agreed to call and fix it first. They would not let me transfer my account to him or add his name and he refused to start from scratch on a new account that was just his. One of the issues was that the account was tied up to my teenage email, which kept getting suspended due to inactivity. He one time set up two-step authentication, but refused to share the password he set for weeks, so I was also locked out of my own account. I warned him a bunch of times that I was tired of dealing with this and he needed to start his own account. Probably not a surprise I've gone low contact and have not spoken to them in two years. I got a single card from my mum around Thanksgiving. I canceled my own profile years ago. I randomly got a call from Blizzard asking for some info so they could reactivate my account. Lo and behold, my dad had to call them because he was locked out again due to the email getting suspended. He didn't even call me directly. I said fuck it and told them no one else had permission to use my account and it was probably a hacker. I logged into my account and reset all the passwords and info, deleted his profile and shut down the account. I also changed my phone number. Some of my friends thought this was hilarious and that he had plenty of chances to get his own account, but some of my other friends think it was harsh to destroy something he put thousands of hours into. Am I the arsehole for deleting everything? And I think OP's friends are completely right on this one. Well, the, the ones that first said this was that they found it hilarious and he had plenty of chances to get his own account and he used that age bullshit excuses i put a roof over your head so it automatically makes you not the asshole to me but proof somewhere says not the asshole you, you gave your stepdad plenty of chances to create his own account and you aren't his personal customer service assistant i'm surprised it's taking you this long but well done for doing it p.s i hate parents who use i we put a roof over your head feed you clothe you etc that's the bare minimum you should be doing for your child don't use it like some kind of bargaining chip Penelope Dreadful says, not the asshole. What a leech, lol. He's a grown man. He can pay for his own WoW account. OK Cauliflower says, not the asshole. I don't understand why your stepdad didn't just ask if he could take over the old email. It sounds like you never used it. Sounds like he could have avoided all this if he was just proactive. Scatterbrain says, not the asshole, but I'm really curious. How the heck did he get himself locked out so often? In all the years I played WoW, I never had to call Blizzard support. I had to check my email every so often when e.g. traveling to a different country, but that's about it. I was also thinking every time you get a new expansion, it's an excellent time to make a new character. You get a free boost to the max level of the previous expansion and all the stuff of the previous expansion is useless anyway. And there's a new expansion every other year. He had plenty of opportunities to create his own account and make a new character without losing any progress in the current expansion, requiring him to miss raiding or whatever is so important to him. The only thing he'd lose is mounts and stuff, which kind of sucks if he was a collector, since some of those things he can never get again on a new account. But he should have thought of that before he kept badgering you. It sounds like he has some pretty severe gaming addiction, which would explain, but not excuse, his behavior. OP replied saying he would enter the password in wrong, insist he was right in repeatedly punching the same password until he got locked out for too many wrong attempts. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and your thoughts and verdicts on all of today's stories. It's always fantastic to hear your thoughts. 
Thank you so much for spending 20 minutes or so of your day with me today. If you'd like to support the channel further, you absolutely can. But as always, never any pressure to do so by clicking that LinkedIn tree in the description down below and clicking Patreon and joining up there. Or alternatively, you can just click the join button down below on YouTube and join up there. Thank you so much for your love, time and support towards the channel. It means the absolute world to me, keeps me going on the daily and you're absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, much love and I'll see you in the next one.